Hey, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jordan Bloomingdale, owner of Dream Life Innovations, and I wanted to make this short video um, based off of some questions and inquiries that I've received lately. So a little bit about what Dream Life Innovations is. Um, we help, <clears throat> excuse me, we help um, those who are looking to become eligible to purchase a home, be able to do so and get into that position. And then additionally, we help existing homeowners um, become educated and learn the benefits around residential solar. And so I say that to say um, recently I've had a number of questions um, either through meetings or consultations where uh, people will ask me, you know, why is this one company? Um, why aren't you splitting it into two? It seems like it's uh, different demographics, that sort of thing. Um, and so I thought it was important um, and could be beneficial to make this video to explain a little bit more in depth outside of just saying, well, we help these people for do this and then we help those people do that and really kind of dig in a little bit and explain um, our, our process and ultimately what we're trying to achieve um, as our mission here at Dream Life Innovations. So let's take the, the first part, right? The, the power of financial literacy. Um, being able to achieve a goal like home ownership is, is not a, a small feat, even though it happens every single day. Um, there's a lot of moving parts there's a lot of forethought that goes into it. And um, unless you're just someone who naturally is already in that position um, by circumstance, it, it takes some work. And so, um, you know, one of the first things that we do is we provide a free consultation. If you are a renter, if you are maybe staying with family, um, maybe you're a newlywed, um, and your goal is to eventually own your own place, it starts with financial literacy. And um, the basis of that being something that, you know, we were not taught in school um, unless you just happen to be um, in a certain, certain area, a certain part of the country, certain <laughs> part of each state. Um, it, it, it's more than likely that you were not taught more than maybe had a balance of checkbook, right? And honestly, financial literacy is much more than that. It's really understanding how money works in the world, how someone manages to earn money or to make money, um, how that person then manages to save it, and ultimately how they invest it either into a home, a car, um, other stocks and bonds and such, other forms of investments. But it's also about being able to make informed decisions that lead to a financial well-being, a financial, uh, a healthy financial um, well, well-being. And so being able to not just gain financial literacy, but also being able to educate yourself on the basics and then on the advanced, um, the more advanced skills is something that each and every one of us should learn to master. Um, you know, there's an age old saying that you don't know what you don't know. And I've personally found that living life and just going through you know, year after year, um, it's become even more important to figure out what I don't know that I don't know. Um, and so as we're going through, like I said, we'll do the initial consultation. We'll figure out what your goal is or goals may be, um, both short term as well as long term where your starting point is, because that's equally important, but then also putting together a roadmap on how to achieve said goals. So 
if it's just a matter of building credit that doesn't exist, you know, say you don't have a credit score or it's something that you haven't used very often, um, then that's one thing. If it's in the other situation where you may have, um, you know, negative items made past mistakes, there, there's certainly no judgment, but it needs to be identified that that's, that's where you're at. And so if that's the case, then we can also help with that too. Different situations require different tactics. Uh, some, you know, it's just a matter of building additional positive trade lines. Others may require actually removing negative items such as collections, late payment history, even evictions, repossessions, maybe even a bankruptcy. Um, and being able to help you get back to that place where you are able to then go from there and continue building those positive trade lines that you've then established. And so all of that starts with having a competency around financial literacy, becoming literate in the financial sense. And so there's a couple of tools that we utilize outside of rem removing negative items, um, such as, you know, a budget. Everyone thinks that, oh, well, budgeting is boring and, you know, it's it's not going to get me where I need to be because it's just budgeting. Like, who doesn't know how to budget? But the fact of the matter is there's more to just budgeting than saying, oh, well, you know, I pay my bills each month or, oh, well. You know, I know that, you know, I only have to pay my insurance and my car payment and my mortgage or my rent. There's more to it than that. If you are, you know, bringing in a certain amount and you're paying the little bills that you have, but then you're blowing the rest of it, that's not budgeting. You're not accounting for any unforeseen emergencies. You're not accounting for any long-term financial goals and you're certainly not allowing for or accounting for you know your future self because you know you may wake up one day right now you may be happy renting but you may wake up one day and decide you know actually owning a place of my own would not be that bad but if you have nothing to show for it as far as savings as far as investments as far as you know financial health care um, is concerned, then you're you're allowing yourself to only get started on the back foot, and it's going to take a lot to catch up, a lot harder of a time to catch up. Okay, so having that financial health care, that financial literacy, knowing how to budget, knowing how to save properly, knowing how to pay off any debt rather than just throwing money at at it and hoping that it just dwindles away one day. Um, actually having a roadmap, a blueprint, a game plan for anything that you're trying to achieve, whether it be debt payoff, a new home, a new car, refinancing, whatever it may be. Um, having that roadmap and that blueprint is, is the first starting point. And so, you know, when we're going through, that's that's our starting point, but it's not everyone's starting point. So while we can help a renter, you know, report their rent and build their credit and, you know, ultimately become qualified to become a homeowner, there's others who may come to us who are already an existing homeowner. And so I want to talk about that for for just a, a minute because there are ways to be able to turn what innately is a, um, a, a liability by nature in a home. Um, the fact that, you know, it takes more money than what it provides to you. Uh, now, granted, there's some exceptions to that rule. If you have uh, already have solar or if you have um, an Airbnb on the property, that contributes, or maybe you, you know, are selling something. Maybe you're using it as an office. That those kind of activities, those kind of functions and applications can move that needle. But one of the things that I wanted to talk about specifically 
is solar panels. And there's a lot of misinformation going around about what solar panels are, what they can achieve, and ultimately who they're for. Because the first thing that I tell people, if, you know, when they come to me, like I said, some people may come to me as a renter looking to become a homeowner. Others may come to me as a homeowner looking to become a solar homeowner. And they're just trying to figure out if it's right for them. And so what I want to be is I want to be that guide. If I can be that guide and help you figure out if it is for you, but then if it is being able to help you create that plan, design the system, get it installed and ultimately helping it to start benefiting you, that is my ultimate mission. But at the same time, if it's not for you, I also want to be that person who tells you, look, you know, sir or ma'am, I'm sorry, but the setup that you have with your home is just not conducive to being able to benefit from residential solar. Um, there are a lot of ways that we can make it work, but sometimes that's that's the end, the end conclusion. And so I want to be that person because if I can tell you that you're not eligible, you're more than likely to have the trust in me to be able to tell your friends, your family, your neighbors, your colleagues that, hey, this person told me that I wasn't eligible, but you may be. And whether or not you are or not, he's going to tell you, and I have the trust and I have the confidence in him that he's going to tell you that as well, whether or not you are eligible. Okay. And so as we're going through, you know, there's a lot of questions around solar panels, around solar batteries. Um, and the first thing that I tell people is, you know, I can't give you a definitive answer around whether or not you are eligible until I'm able to really analyze and do a consultation around your latest utility bill. What we want to do is we want to, again, make sure it fits to your budget, your energy consumption, and your old overall lifestyle, in addition to any future goals that you have. You know, maybe your in-laws are moving in down the road. Maybe you're planning on putting a pool in the backyard. All of these goals and all of these additions uh, in the future will account towards your utility consumption in addition to just everyday appliances that get upgraded and you know other applications that require more and more energy uh, as we live our day days uh, daily lives okay and so last but not least I wanted to share a little bit around how that application then can attribute to an overall wealth creation strategy so integrating solar energy into either an existing wealth creation strategy or building a new wealth creation strategy is really a smart move. Um, so like I said, with the right setup, you can achieve a return on investment through savings and even generating passive income, again, depending on what state you're in, by selling excess energy back into the grid. Now that is becoming fewer and far between, but I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that those who have already taken advantage are being grandfathered in and therefore they are able to continue seeing those benefits even though policies are changing state by state. Okay, so what I would like to ask is if any of this resonated with you, if it sparked questions, if it, um, you know, helped you to maybe realize that maybe there was something that I wasn't considering or maybe there was something that I didn't know that I didn't know, please reach out and let's have a conversation. I'm not here to sell anyone. I'm here to educate so that you can provide yourself and your family a holistic, educational, um, fully encompassing decision and you know have the knowledge in order to make that decision um without you know without 
being afraid of, of leaving anything on the table. Okay. So like I said, I wanted to keep this short and sweet. If you are interested in gaining more information, um, please either look me up on Facebook. Uh, you can visit our webpage uh, at, excuse me, sorry, at dreamlifeinnovations.com. You can also download either a, our solar or a credit ebook at credit.dreamlifeinnovations.com as well as solar.dreamlifeinnovations.com. And then, um, like I said, we're, we're on Facebook, same under the same word, uh, Dream Life Innovations, as well as Instagram uh, and LinkedIn. So again, I hope this has been beneficial. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks.